Hey, what you reading for? Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about books, literary, horror, classics, and contemporary, and where I am obsessed with ranking things. Today, winners of the Bram Stoker Award for Best Horror Novel of the Year. The Bram Stoker Awards are given out by the Horror Writers Association, so it is a peer-based award, kind of. The association is compro pro comprised mostly of writers, although there are also non-writers, um, professionals in publishing in one capacity or the other. The, right, uh, the Horror Writers Association is an international association, in theory, although it's largely um, North American. Since its inauguration in 1987, the Horror Writers Association has given out 38 Bram Stoker Awards for Best Horror Novel of the Year, all of which, as far as I know, are from the United States, are from our two, our two authors, were two authors, have been two authors from the United States. Now, to me, this award uh, reminds me a bit of the Grammys for music in that they nominate or they celebrate book popular books. Um, they celebrate a book's success more so than trying to uh, promote or discover underground works or works that are more audacious or uh, innov innovative. But I still follow the award. I, I am interested in knowing what's popular in addition to trying to discover more underground writers and innovative works. I will be honest though, as a reader, this award is a hit or miss with me. Of the 38 winners, I have read 12. And in this video, I am going to rank them from my least favorite to my absolute favorite. But I do want to be positive on this channel, uh, something admittedly I have not been too successful at lately. I do want to be positive, so what I will do is for each book on this ranking, I will start by giving you a short extract from a five-star review, and then I will uh, share with you my take on the book, which will mostly be less enthusiastic. So, no intro sequence this time, let's get right to it. At number 10, the most recent winner, The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias, winner from 2022. It's a crime story that contorts into witchery, then body horror, and back to crime again with a very realistic feeling of impending disaster throughout. I would not consider The Devil Takes You Home to be a horror book. It was more of a crime drama, crime thriller, with some supernatural elements. As first person narration, the, uh, the narrator I found super annoying. Um, a very reductionist, narrow-minded worldview uh, that felt kind of preachy at times with uh, all white people are racist and all brown people are dangerous criminals with hearts of gold. I prefer uh, more nuance in my books and uh, this book did not give me any nuance. At number 11, The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, winner from 2018. If you think you know where this is going, you are wrong. Nothing formulaic about this one. I went between my own case of Stockholm Syndrome to yelling, shoot them, shoot them all. Disturbing, brilliant, read it in one swoop, loved it. This one was a surprise for me. I usually like Paul Trem Tremblay's work a lot, but this one uh, I did not enjoy. Um, I, it felt nasty, but not a fun kind of nasty, like a ugly nasty. I think the book was trying to get me to think about like religion and tolerance or something like that. I'm not sure what the book was trying to tell me, but I was uh, not attentive to its message. Um, I was just put off by the, by the ugliness of it. At number 10, Ararat, uh, Ararat, Ararat, Aha, Ararat. 
Ar Ararat, Ararat. At number 10, Ararat by Christopher Golden, winner of in 2017. They battle weather, each other, and the feeling of dread that fills the cavern. What they find should have been left alone. Good and slightly spooky had me guessing. With the right frame of mind, I think I could have enjoyed this one um, because it was goofy. Um, but not, I don't think not in a self-aware kind of way. I think it was goofy without knowing it. But I went into it with different expectations. Despite its silly premise, the book takes itself quite seriously. But then uh, in the third act, it just, it just gets ridiculous. This is the only experience I have with Christopher Golden's work. I'm, I don't know if he, if he takes this tone with his other books, but I think it could be a fun read. Uh, you just have to know that it's super goofy, despite the tone it tries to set in the beginning. At number nine, Zombie by Joyce Carol Oates, winner in 1995. If you are not uncomfortable while reading this book, you are not human. You will not empathize with the main character, Q, but you may be fascinated. Stuck in the steady stream of madness, this book will challenge you. I feel dirty after reading it. We'll never read again. This is a short book. Uh, it's essentially the diary of a loser serial, serial killer. There isn't much to the character, and he is the only character in the book, really. It's not bad, um, but it didn't give me a novel experience or a novel horror experience um, because it, it, it's so short and reads so quickly. It doesn't do, do anything that I haven't read before in other books and, and gotten more out of in other books, but it's, it's not a bad one. At number eight, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones from 2020. An unsettling novel of characters haunted by their past choices and, as a result, finding themselves caught in an impossible situation. This is the kind of book that lingers with you long after you finish reading it. A perfect October read, or really a perfect read for any season. So this is about a young man, a Native American, who is excommunicated from the Indian Reservation, and he returns, try to reconnect with his, uh, his, his roots, and, try, and seeking forgiveness. That part of the story I thought was really well done, and that worked on me. If this had been a literary drama, I, I would have really enjoyed it. Um, but the horror aspects did not work on me at all. Um, they felt kind of unnecessary and they detracted from what I think was the more interesting parts of, of this book. But the, uh, the drama that this young man is going through, I, I found in his attempt to reconnect with his roots, I, I found that interesting. But as a horror book, no. no. At number seven... A Dark Matter by Peter Straub, winner from 2010. A Dark Matter is totally Peter Straub. Obscure, difficult, wicked, smart, intriguing. If this had been my first experience with Straub, I probably would have DNF'd it, though. Only seasoned Straub readers apply. Newbies, check out Ghost Story or The Hellfire Club. This book was so slow. It took me a long time to read this book, and it's not a big book. It's one of those books that um, I really wasn't enjoying it while I was reading it, but that was years ago, and I do look back on it fondly. It, it, there are some very interesting ideas explored here, and some interesting, unique characters. Uh, so I, I didn't enjoy the reading experience, it was just too slow, um, but it planted some seeds in me that I, that I carry with me, and, and I think fondly of the book now. Incidentally, as a response to that uh, review, uh, A Dark Matter was my first Peter Straub experience, so I get what he's saying there, but I, um, I've read Go I read Ghost Story years after reading A Dark Matter, and uh, I prefer A Dark Matter. 
At number six, Carrying Comfort by Dan Simmons, winner from 1989. This book is about mind control, vampirism that not only takes your life essence, but your very soul. It is about having complete power over individuals, maybe. Entire cities, communities, maybe. The entire world, most definitely. Will they succeed? I don't know, but I feel like I need an aluminum helmet a la signs to keep me being me. Admittedly, I did not have the right expectations going into this book. Um, I, it had been recommended to me from friends who were more literary minded, so I thought it was going to be a literary, literary horror, but actually it's more of an, an action horror uh, airport book even. And it's a big book, it's like 900 pages. Uh, so I thought the writing was very well done, but I was, um, I was a little bit frustrated because I was looking for something that the book wasn't. Just too bad. And it's a long book. It's more like a, like a screenplay for an action horror movie or a miniseries. Because I was getting the sense that a lot of the scenes that I was reading were not at all necessary to the plot. I feel like he could have told this story in three or four hundred pages. Didn't need to be nine hundred pages. But it was good for what it is. Unfortunately, I, I went in with, with different expectations. There are some really strong scenes, some dark scenes. Uh, if you've read the book, you'll know, uh, like the chess scene was quite disturbing. And scenes from the concentration camps. Yeah, there's some powerful stuff in this book. But it is an, an action horror airport book. And it's long. At number five, The Fisherman by John Langan, winner from 2016. This novel is a potent mix of cosmic menace, human frailties, and dark folklore. Two stories take place along different timelines and intersect in a colossal ordeal. The writing is masterful, and the reader is plunged into a black sea of dire possibilities. I'll agree with the reviewer. Uh, I thought that the writing was very good uh, in this book. I, I really enjoyed this book. Um, it's a story of, of grief. Uh, a, man, a man loses his wife and, uh, and, and to cope with the grief he takes up fishing. And the lore that this, um, that this story introduces I found was quite interesting as well. Interesting without being scary, but uh, the the characters are, are well fleshed out and the writing is really good and, and I enjoyed this read. Uh, it's essentially a story about grief. Um, so it did, it, it's, a, it's a bit like Pet Cemetery, but with more fishing. At number four, The Drowning Girl by Caitlin R. Kiernan, winner from 2012. This weird tale can be difficult to sustain through the course of an entire novel, which is why it's often most successful in short form. How does an author maintain that strangeness, that otherworldliness throughout 200 to 300 pages? Well, Kiernan's figured it out, though I doubt anyone could ever copy her technique here without looking like a complete ripoff artist. I agree with the reviewer that the, the writing is, is unique and I uh, thought it was very well done. It, it is essentially the story of a young woman who's schizophrenic and uh, she's giving us her first person account almost like a diary and we see her sanity slipping away and we see it in the prose, how the prose become more and more confused. Um, there isn't a lot to the story here other than this young woman losing her mind, but the execution is spectacular in this book. It's a very intimate look at, uh, at someone losing, losing their mind. I talk about this book in one of my videos, the most disturbing books I've ever read. Yeah, I really liked it. I need to read more from Caitlin R. Kiernan. But she hasn't come out with a book in, in, in quite some time. I don't think she's come out with a book since The Drowning Girl. I don't think. Could be wrong. But I would like to read more from her. Um, I, I was impressed. Very impressed with The Drowning Girl. At number three, Bloodkin by Steve Rasnick Tem, winner from 2013. Wow! Just a phenomenal southern gothic novel with a twist. The 
The writing is superb, and the scene in the Snake Handling Church revival was totally mesmerizing. What a great book. Now, I love this book mainly for two reasons. The setting, it's set in Appalachia. It's a great setting for horror. And this book, Blood Kin, has the most badass villain I have encountered probably since Dracula. The villain in this, well, the story is about a young girl. I think she's 13, 12 or 13. I don't remember exactly. But she has been promised to, uh, in marriage to uh, the preacher in this town, snake handling preacher. And so as soon as she hits puberty, so she is just dreading this, this day that will, when she hits puberty. Uh, so it's really, the story is focused on her and her dread. But this villain is so bad. He's the snake handler and he, he walks around grumpy with these two boxes under his arms, these long boxes that contain all the snakes that he uses for his uh, services. And his hands are, and, and arms are all leathery because he's been bitten so many times by snakes that his, his skin is just rough and mangled and puffed up. Yeah, it's a super creepy villain. Mm. At number two, A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, winner from 2015. I know I'm a bit late to the party with this read, but better late than never, right? This is one of those books where the execution of the story is what makes it shine and bright it does. The frame of the novel is an adult Mary telling an interviewer about her experiences with her supposedly possessed sister, Marjorie, many years prior, most of which is captured on film for reality television. Now this was a big surprise for me because it is a YA book or borderline YA, if you, if you want. And it's about um, an exorcism. Two things I have absolutely no interest in at all. But I really, really liked this book. The writing was fun and engaging. The characters were compelling. The reason why I have no interest in exorcisms is firstly demon possession, I think is kind of silly. And it's not original. We've heard these kinds of stories dozens and dozens of times before. And exorcisms are real things that occur throughout the world. They occur to children and they're essentially abuse and torture of children. And the fact that we use this and we're okay with using this as some for pop culture references and tropes, I, I find that problematic. You know, to say the least. But what Paul Tremblay does in this book is something different. He acknowledges the reality of that. And he, instead of preaching to us, like, you know, like I just did, instead of doing that, he uses the reality of what is going on and what exorcisms really are. And he uses that to his advantage to give us more depth into the characters and to create a different sort of tension. So I think he managed to give us with a head full of ghosts, a book about an exorcism, but I think it's kind of also socially responsible and it works to the story's benefit. So I was impressed and I enjoyed the read. Even though it's YA, I enjoyed it and I'm not gonna apologize for it. And at number one, as my favorite Bram Stoker winner that I have read is Dr. Sleep by Stephen King, winner in 2014. Wow, I couldn't reread this fast enough. King is at the top of his game in this unexpected, at least to me, sequel to The Shining. And his writing has never been so good. So reader friendly and at times downright beautiful, almost poetic. I'm going to agree with the re reviewer here. I do feel like Dr. Sleep is uh, Stephen King at the top of his game. Now, I did not read Stephen King when I was growing up, so I do not have the benefit of, of nostalgia when I read him. And I do get the sense uh, that his writing has gotten much better over the years, which makes sense, right? 
uh, the more he writes, the better he gets. So I do have a preference for his more recent works. Although I have liked some of his earlier books too. But um, yeah, Doctor Sleep really, really played nicely to me. Uh, reader friendly, definitely. Uh, and we have essentially two stories working together here. We have this this band of of vampires, kind. I guess they're kind of vampires who try to uh, steal this this essence from people who have the, these uh, psychic powers. We have that story, and we have the, the man Danny Torrance, who uh, is trying to protect a young girl from these this band of vampires. At the same time, he's dealing with alcoholism, and that's a, a major part of the story, and that really worked well on me. Um, it takes a look at it. it's real an honest look at addiction and I found it um, effective and actually quite touching. I read Dr. Sleep before I read uh, The Shining and I, def I have a strong preference for Dr. Sleep. There you have it, my ranking of the Bram Stoker Award winners for best horror novel of the year of the 12 that I have read. Do you have any experience with the books on this list? Were you able to get something different than what I got out of them? If you are not a subscriber to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. The more subscribers this channel gets, the more confidence I get, and the more I want to keep putting out content, and I do appreciate the support and encouragement. I look forward to interacting with you in the comment section. Thank you for watching. I'll see you at the next video.